Hi guys, I'm here with Philip Carrier at the new grad show. Hi Philip, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, first of all, we wanted to let everybody know that the show is going to be up for two weeks, so you can come down anytime between this Tuesday and uh, the following two Tuesdays to see the show. So first of all, Philip, Jordan and I were curious a little bit about your process and whether you begin with the visual imagery or the mechanics of your piece. Um, I probably, with this piece, began with just playing with reflected light and working with the light and the materials except themselves. Uh, trying to um, work with the materials and what light can inform, um, how light can inform the materials and how to use those in my process. And uh, the mechanics come secondary to that, um, just as a function of I need to work this in this way. Um, so that's probably the process. Um, can you talk a little bit about your background in undergrad and how that informed this piece, both mechanically and conceptually? Uh, sure. Um, so my background um, is in sculpture. Um, I ended up in undergrad doing a lot of uh, installation art um, and doing installations with light and video and um, both of those interacting with objects. And so this piece is kind of a distillation of all of that. and and really trying to take it down to uh, light and object and working with the two of those. I'm Amy here with Jillian Schley at the Step Gallery. So Jillian, tell me a little about um, how you came to the process of doing ink on drafting paper. Um, that's a great question. About a year ago, um, I just started experimenting with materials, throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks and trying to do things differently. I had been working with acrylic paint and oil paint and charcoal, but um, one day I just poured ink on drafting film and just fell in love with the way that it evaporated and sort of left this, um, the darker edge and then the interior becomes lighter and I just fell in love with the way that it looked and so that's really how it started and I did a lot of practice pieces and experimenting with materials that I could apply to the ink as far as a resist process goes. And um, so from there, I've just started building this body of work. And um, so really, it just came out of experimentation, I think. Nice, awesome. It was kind of one of those aha moments where you're like, this is what I've been looking for. Yeah, that's right. I haven't seen it before. I'm sure that people have tried it before. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. But it was new for me. And, and that way, it was inspiring enough that I wanted to push it and experiment with it. So. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about the time frame that this takes you to do a piece such as this. Well, um, because it's plastic, it's non-absorbent, and the ink obviously is really liquid. I'll dilute it um, to get different saturation levels. So I have to work flat, and um, so it takes up my table in my studio. Can't move it, and um, so it'll take about a week um, per piece that sometimes more. It just depends on how many times I want to go in and add. Um, it's more of an additive than subtractive process. But um, so, yeah, I would say a week, two weeks tops, but it varies. So, Awesome. Great. Well, thank you. They're lovely. And how long is the show up? Um, it's up through Friday. Up through Friday. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm Amy. Peace out.
Hi guys, Amy here with Chet Lawton at the BFA Sculpture and Printmaking show at Gallery 100 is where we're at actually. So Chet, we're curious about your materials and how you go about finding them and using them in your pieces. Uh, it's pretty much whatever's laying around. I do a lot of laps in my car and on foot, just kind of wandering. And uh, when I see something that I want to make something out of, I grab it. And lately that's been styrofoam and cardboard. Awesome. So what about your process? How do you go about assembling these sculptures? Um, again, lately it always changes, but I'll just make a block, laminate whatever I found and start carving at it. And then apply paint or various surface materials until I'm satisfied with it. How long does that process normally take? Depends on the piece. This one took me all semester. Other pieces have taken me a day, some a week. It all depends, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. I'm Amy. Peace out. What? Hey, it's Amy here with Kelly Wilton, BFA Sculpture Candidate at Gallery 100. Yes, I still remember what Gallery 100 <laughs> So, Kelly, we are curious, since neither one of us do neon, if you could tell us a little bit about the process of neon, uh, both logistically and conceptually with your piece. All right. Well, so neon is slightly a dying art since it's not very popular anymore. But basically what you do is you take a glass, hollow glass tube and you heat it up until it's red hot and then bend it to however you want. And then you put it on two electrodes onto the end of it and pump it with neon gas and then the electricity makes the gas light up and neon is red, argon is blue, and then you add a little bit of mercury to argon. And conceptually, I wanted this piece um, to convey like weight and the gravity of weighing down like string over hooks. So it's called the gravity of the situation. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So is there a lot of troubleshooting with neon, working with glass and um, gases? Yes. Um, well, to get the final product, it took me about 10 times bending the glass over and over again and redoing welds and the tube just breaking sporadically. And also when you um, bombard the glass tube, which is when you vacuum out all uh, impurities and then pump in the gas, the neon gas into it, you can potentially blow off your hands. So that's a little bit dangerous. So we let um, Mr. Uh, Professor Jim White take care of that for us so we don't get injured. <laughs> and he has plenty of experience with that. Not blowing off his hands, but uh, not blowing off his hands per se, yes. right? <laughs> All right, Kelly, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. I'm Amy. Peace out. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Amy here with Kyle Blaylock, a Sculpture BFA candidate. Kyle, first of all, um, at Gallery 100 here, how long does the show go? The show goes until November 2nd for two weeks. Awesome, that's a long show. So first of all, we were curious about your color palette and color choice. Okay, well the color palette for this piece, um, the blue is significant because it represents the color boys are given when they're born as like a gender identification color. And then the red is a complementary color to that to make the figure pop out. So that's pretty much the color choice. Awesome, thank you. Also, we were also wondering about how you, um, how you get your inspiration for your pieces and where that comes from. Well, this semester I took um, a more personal route with my work as opposed to making things that I didn't connect to with on an intimate level. So for this piece, I took things like the antler from my childhood because I grew up in a hunting family. So we killed things that we ate. So it kind of affected me that way. Um, this piece was drawn from a female mannequin's body as a way to show um, gender, gender identification in Western society. So the penis is added on there and then the breast and face are taken off to kind of detract from the idea that it's a female mannequin's body and kind of make it more hermaphroditic in a way to show basically that in Western society we are like, you know, forced to go this whole macho route as boys and I believe that we all have feminine characteristics. So adding, you know, these male parts and this macho idea to these female bodies is kind of a way to say that we should show both sides of our sexuality, our feminine side and our masculine side. Awesome, that was beautiful. Thank you, and I agree. 
Um, thank you so much. And that's the end of our interviews. I'm Amy. Peace out.